just great. Let me read this inscription to Mike Bedart, Lifetime Legal Achievement Award, honoring California's great trailblazers on the path to legal justice. May 17, 2008. Congratulations, Mike. Thanks very much. I have a tough crowd right here. First of all, thank you very much, uh, Bill. Uh, this is the end of the night, and I'm appreciative that any of you are even left at this hour, so thank you. I was concerned. <laughs> and so, uh, where to begin? First of all, I want to acknowledge and uh, extend my congratulations to my co-honorees tonight. Uh, these are people that I will never forget, as long as I live, <clears throat> having been on the same booklet or the same brochure uh, receiving an award with the likes of uh, Senator Boxer, Senator Kuehl, Harvey Rosenfield, people that are really giants in the efforts on behalf of consumers all across the country. So let's give them one more big round of applause because they deserve it. Interestingly, today at lunch, uh, one of the many friends that came today is a friend of mine from the state of Washington, Rick Friedman, and we were having lunch because we picked him up uh, while they came after they arrived at the Ontario airport near our home in Chino. We had lunch, and he says, you know, Mike, he says, I went to law school with Sheila Kuehl at Harvard, and I've testified before Sheila's uh, committees. I've watched her at work. And uh, I've had a, you know, uh, the opportunity to see firsthand what she does and how she handles herself, followed her career. And I'll be honest with you, Sheila, I never knew you had gone to Harvard Law School. Uh, I knew her like most of you know her as Zelda Gilroy from Dobie Gillis. Because I'm old enough to remember that. And uh, he said, Mike, she was so good that it made me think when she was on that moot court competition, how could I ever, ever be a lawyer to be like that? And that's coming from Rick Friedman, who is a member of the inner circle of uh, lawyers, 100 lawyers in the country, one of the top trial lawyers in the country. And so that was a true story that happened in Chino today, Sheila, so congratulations on your work. <clears throat> Everybody, uh, I'm sure, thinks their family is great and uh, is proud of their, their family, but if anybody in the world is blessed, uh, I'm a person that's blessed, starting with those parents. My parents were Ben and Lucy Bedart. Uh, my father, my, fa my brother Ben, who's here tonight, my older brother, my older brother. And our father, uh, Ben, was a, he came here in September of 1930 not exactly a high point of uh, economic history for this country. And he came to milk cows by hand in Van Nuys, California, believe it or not. Uh, he worked for four months for free in order to have a, a job, pay, pay him a buck a day. And they had to milk cows for 17 years by hand before World War II technology brought along the milking machine. <laughs> that was high technology for my dad. And so uh, he met my mom here, a farm girl, a strong farm girl from Chino, California, and they brought us up the way parents should bring up their children. We had love every day of our life. We had plenty to eat, probably too much to eat, uh, but they valued education. Uh, my father and mother used to say, if you could do it easier than we did it, then go to school and do it a different way. And so, while I never, certainly never worked as hard as my parents did on that farm you saw a picture of, I never worked as hard as my brother worked on that farm. Uh, I liked music, they gave me accordion lessons. <laughs> and, and so, um, but I, I liked school and I was blessed. Uh, and all, my, any judge here tonight that's my friend or a justice of the Court of Appeal or other lawyers, all of you who are my friends, 
uh, you can't start naming everybody in the room, but I think everybody will indulge me in allowing me to introduce teachers, people who were in my life, uh, my teachers. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't bring every teacher that I had or loved or respected because many of them are still living, but I brought some people that were kind enough to come starting with my seventh grade teachers, uh, Larry Woodruff and, and Peggy Bass. Please stand up. <clears throat> when I was in seventh grade in Chino, Larry Woodruff was a, a dashing, uh, confirmed bachelor with a 54 Corvette convertible, blue. We were all envious of. And, and, and Peggy Bass was this charming, witty, good-looking, common learnings teacher. And he was my science teacher and the dean of boys, and Peggy was the common learnings teacher, which back then was English and history and reading and all that stuff. And uh, we were there in West Hall, and we watched them fall in love. And we used to follow them around the school while they hold hands, and, <laughs> and, and, and we... Uh, so, and one time I got in trouble in Mr. Woodruff's class and she told me when I walked in her class, I'm disappointed in you, Mike. And I've never forgotten it to this day. So, I hope tonight you're not disappointed in me. <laughs> and then moving on, Dr. George Galbraith at, from Cal Poly Pomona, uh, I'm not going to embarrass him by telling you what he's accomplished in his life, but someday over a drink, anybody wants to ask me about him, I'll be happy to share it with you. He is one special human being.